here at uh, Comic Interlude uh, with Tim Welch. Tim is a local musician uh, and also, much like me, a huge comic fan. So that's why we decided to come here. Um, we, uh, Some of our mutual friends had said to me forever, Hey, you got to talk to Tim. Tim's really into comics. And sometimes I kind of... Um, don't look forward to those conversations <laughs> because with co- like, there's so much you can talk about with comics. There's history, there's industry stuff, there's creator stuff, but somehow the conversation mm-hmm. always devolves to, uh, do you think Superman could beat Batman in a fight? Or Deadpool is really cool, and, and so I just don't enjoy those conversations, so a lot of times I avoid them. But then I finally I met Tim at Best Friends Bar, mm-hmm. and we talked, and the guy uh, can go inside baseball on some comics. He knows his stuff. I like baseball. Too. <laughs> he likes baseball, too. He likes it all. Um, so uh, what I realized after the fact, though, was Best Friends Bar might have been the first time we actually met, but I was actually kind of halfway aware of you because you used to be in a band, Catawampus Universe. Mm, yep. and I had no idea. Back in the day, we used to see them every Tuesday night, I think, at High on Rose. Was that right? Oh, that was Club Dub. That was Club Dub. Where did Catawampus Cl- play Club Dub grew out of, okay, okay. of the ashes of Catawampus. Okay, that's right. That's right. But Catawampus used to play at Cosmic Charlie's all the time. Right, when it was Linus. When it was, right, right. So what happened to those guys? Well, Catawampus grew out of a band that uh, Joel and I had started called Red Fly, a nation, later just Red Fly. And then that band split, and he formed Catawampus. I had another band, Strictly Wet, that grew out of that with Willie Ames. Yeah, yeah. One of his first bands in town playing guitar. Uh, then I joined Catawampus okay. a few years later. What uh, did you play for Catawampus? Drums, drums and over. vocals. And then Dave Ferris was playing drums, too. So we had two drums. Dave Ferris was in Catawampus? Yeah. There's all these people I'm aware of that were in Catawampus, but at the time I didn't know them. Now I know. He so. was playing percussion, and then I came in on kit, and then I said, well, you should play kit, too. And then... <laughs> But then he became the full-time drummer, and I would just kind of play a little percussion and gotcha, gotcha. do a lot of drinking. Really. <laughs> sure, uh, yeah. Uh, it's really uh, not one of my, my better times. <laughs> my, but, uh, so, uh, big into comics, big into music, which came first? Comics. Comics. Okay. Well, I mean, professionally, music. But, I mean, I, I, love, I love music as a child. I just was always drawn to it, and records, and, you know, but comics were a close second. I learned to read from comics. But when I got to be, you know, 13 or 14, I discovered, like, punk rock and that kind of stuff. And Girls. A couple years later, I was a little late, and I had to get a car first, sure. you know, a driver's license. But uh, I put the comics away, and, yeah. you know, because at that age, you know, I was kind of embarrassed by it. Uh, and, uh, but I came back to them through Dave Ferris, as a matter of fact. Really? Comic guy. Uh, gave me The Watchmen to read. Okay. How many how many bands are you in right now? Oh, thousands. <laughs> do you hate that question? I know Robbie Sins <laughs> hates that question. Yeah, yeah, I do. But when you're being asked on camera in front of people, yeah. it's a valid question. Yes, okay. that's what I thought. Um, right now, I think it's at five. Five. And one of them, uh, the band that you front, is Mick Moon Shock Theater, yes. and you were in that with your son. My son Graham on bass, who took lessons from Willie Ames for five or six years. Who's your drummer? Who is my drummer? So being in a son with your band, uh, say you're playing in a club or something, who's that more painful for, you or him? Uh, or neither of you? Neither, I don't guess. <laughs> it's kind of a pain right now that he's not really old enough to be in. And that, but, <laughs> so, yeah. but he turns 21 next month. Okay, so so, so then the show of possibilities open right. up. So okay. So favorite comic and favorite brand. Favorite comic. band. That's not like I said brand. Sandman, <laughs> without a doubt. I don't even why. I mean, that's my favorite anything. It's my favorite work of art. It's my favorite. It's better than any film. It's better than any novel. It's better than any TV show. It's better than any poem. It's better than anything. After that, I'd say Hellboy's my second favorite comic. <laughs> okay, favorite band. Oh, shoot. The Kinks. Okay. And Mott the Hoople. Uh, any, any shows coming up you want to promote? Oh, wow. Uh, well, Saturday, this coming Saturday is uh, the Kentucky Hoscats at the New Willies, which okay. is open full-time now. It's Cheryl's first time playing there, I think. No, this will no, be our second, second gig okay. in the new location. And it is uh, Willie Nelson's birthday, and we're doing the Willie and the Family double album live. Nice. As 
best as we can. So. Okay, great. Um, earlier when we were in here chatting before the show, you said you had a Robert Kirkman story. Oh, yeah. Uh, Robert Kirkman, a lot of people may know as the guy who created Walking Dead. He used to be a, a Lexington boy. What's your Kirkman story? I think he might be from Richmond. I think so. Moved yeah, to Cynthia, maybe. I think. Something yeah. in the area. But when I met him, I think he was living here. I'm not sure how old he was, maybe 17. He was. Uh, he worked the counter at the, the Red Rock collectible store that used to be on Liberty just up from Charlie's Seafood. And then in a tragic misstep, he moved to the Eastland Shopping Center and <laughs> went out of business within of about a year. But while he was at the uh, the uh, Eastland Shopping Center location, uh, Kirkman had just self-published his first issue of Battle Pope okay, on yeah. Funkatronic Comics, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. his own label, with Tony Moore on yeah. the ARP. Mm -hmm. And they had a signing in the store. Uh, I can't remember what day of the week. I'm not sure if it was a Wednesday or maybe a weekend. But I went in, and you remember the scene in Spinal Tap? Where they have the signing in the store, and, and uh, Paul Schaefer is Artie Fufkin, who <laughs> yeah, yeah. arranged it. He's kicked my ass. Come on, I want to kick my ass. It was just like that. There was nobody <laughs> in the store. And, if, you know, I, I liked Robert. You know, we used to chat every week. He was always very funny. And uh, I had no I I didn't know he drew or wrote yeah, or anything, yeah. you know. Um, so I bought one out of out of sympathy. Yeah, sure. You know, that yeah. work out. You know, there's nobody here. And, you know, well, you know, you know the rest. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so you really gave him his start. Is kind of it, was, it was all me. Is yeah. what I feel like you're saying. And uh, actually, a few years later, we, we reconnected online. Uh, I started buying The Walking Dead. Um, and I really liked it and mm -hmm. wrote him the letter. Hey, you know, remember me? And I wasn't sure if he did. To, you know, it's hard to tell. Yeah, through he email. pretended at least. But... Um, then I ran into him a year or so later out at Target, really? and he stopped and ch ch chatted. He had just moved out to Hollywood. He'd finally gotcha. gotten Shit tired of the commuting, yeah. and so he had to go where the money was, where the, the work was. Yeah, yeah. And that's the last I've seen him. But uh, well, I think a lot of people probably want to say thanks to you for starting The Walking Dead. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, man. I knew Sturgill brother. Simpson, too. Oh, I knew Sturgill Simpson. <laughs> Everybody knew Sturgill Simpson, right? Uh, so. We played uh, one time in my basement, and I thought it was okay, you know, he was playing guitar, but he didn't sing. Mm -hmm. I didn't. If he had just sang, <laughs> if he just opened his mouth you and sang, like, Let's start I a band. Uh, yeah, I would have known right then. So, uh, I also snoozed man. on another one. Well, that's, and you're doing all right. <laughs> but, all right, thanks, man. Okay, cool. Well, all right. Guys, I started editing and I realized there was something I forgot to bring up with Tim. Um, go uh, get a hold of the DVD of the Wilco documentary, I'm Trying to Break Your Heart. Watch it with the director's commentary on. There's a point where, uh, where the drummer is doing this little drum bit and he says, I stole this from Tim. The Tim that he says is is Tim Welch. So uh, there's there's your Wilco name drop. Up too, man. So you got all you need from you me? Got all we need.